Hey guys, yesterday Ofcore released a um, consultation document about the autumn exam series because I've been hearing a few murmurings all over the place that are calling the autumn exam series into question um, whether anyone's actually gonna provide exam papers and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do after I've finished editing in this video and putting this video up and out for you is I'm going to go and I'm going to go and read the off-call documents carefully and then I'm going to make another video uh, which will be out tomorrow which will be talking about the um, the the questions that off-call are asking about the autumn exam series. Now um, the sort of questions they're asking is kind of like should all subjects be included in this where are the exams going to be sat? These are all very good questions, and these are the good questions they're asking because nobody knows the answers to this. So what they've done is of course put out a consultation where you, I, your teachers, your parents, whoever, get to have a say in this decision, basically. Um, and it's not be as clear cut as oh the majority rule wins here because there are lots and lots of things for of course to take into account when they are going to be telling. Um, the exam boards about the autumn exam series. Um, so that is that is the main point of this video to tell you that I'm making another video which will be out tomorrow. I know that's weird, but if I just put out a DU10 video and a DU12 video, all the comments on that would be where's the DU11 video. So DU11, I'm making a really big important video for you which will be out tomorrow. Anyway, other stuff. Um, right, we have been stuck in the house for about 20 billion years at the moment, or at least that's what it feels like, and we're going to be stuck in the house for another 20 billion years. And then when you go back to school, you'll be going back you know, as year 12s to do A levels, and you will have been out of the education system for six months. So unlike um, the year 10s and the year 11s who are still trying to study at home, so still, you know, not getting the full benefit of being in school, not getting the full benefit of um, like teacher-led education, they are still doing things. So I think the most important thing for you guys is to not forget everything. Not to let your brains get out of the habit of um, learning, get out of the habit of education. So there are lots and lots of good things you can be doing. Uh, MOOCs are a great thing, massive open online courses. They do not have to be in the subject that you're going to study at A-levels, you can just do something that interests you. Um, you can do things like logic puzzles, I've got a nice little app for my iPad where I sit there and I do logic puzzles because it keeps my brain active and engaged and doing something because for me, at the moment, I've gone from making videos and teaching you guys to teaching the two times table to my kids um, and I'm going a little bit stir crazy with the kind of like the lack of intellectual stimulation so it is important that you keep your brain engaged and you do something whether it's little um, you know logic puzzles whether it's mooks or whether it is something like starting to prepare for your A-levels because when you go back into school you will not be in the same position as the year 12s, the current year 12s when they um, started year 12 because they will have only had um, six weeks of school or you know, eight weeks of school whereas you've had six months off and I know revising for GCSEs was not something maybe you were looking forward to and you were quite relieved that the exams are over but revising for your GCSEs does consolidate the knowledge in your head makes you look back at stuff that um, you know you hadn't done for ages maybe since the beginning of year 9 and it really does prepare you very well for year 12. Um, I'm going to use a chemistry example for this because that's what I teach at A level. Um, so for example balancing equations. Generally something we teach right at the beginning of the course whether that's in year 9, whether that's in year 10 and we don't necessarily have another explicit lesson teaching it throughout the rest of the course. We kind of like assume that you know it. Um, and if you don't know it, then the onus is generally on you to kind of like fix that problem. But we always get through to GCSEs with a whole chunk of people not knowing how to balance equations. And then some of them learn it for their GCSEs. And then some of them get through to sixth form without learning how to balance equations. Now, if you're one of those people where there was a skill taught at the beginning of year nine or a skill taught at the beginning of year 10, that you kind of got in the lesson, 
but then you didn't practice it, but you would have revised it for your GCSE, and it's definitely going to be needed for A-level, then spend a little time practicing it. Because the more prepared you are now, the easier your A-levels are going to be. Every single time I get a new year 12 class, they have forgotten everything they did at GCSE. And it is going to be worse for you guys because you haven't done the revision for your GCSEs and it has been much, much longer out of school. So you're at the practice of learning. You've also, the, you've probably forgotten things. You've probably forgotten a whole chunk of it already, basically. So the better prepared you can be, um, the easier your A-levels will be. Now, that's easy to say, but the motivation to actually get that done is very very hard I completely understand that for like English history it's probably going to be easier because that involves reading books so you grab a book go and sit in the sun um but you can read books for all of the other subjects as well for science go and grab a general science book and um, one of my favorite ones is Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything because it is a short history of nearly everything is fascinating, it's interesting. And I used to read sections of it to my A level classes when the relevant section came up in the course. So there's lots in there about um, the periodic table, um, elements, lots and lots of things that are relevant to the A level course. Um, and you know, I can say that about any science or maths or history because it is actually such a good book. So it doesn't have to be something as explicit as studying it can be something simple as reading a general interest book on the area around the area um and you know if you literally spend the whole summer playing computer games you're probably going to get out of the habit of reading and reading is a really good habit to be in because you're going to be doing it lots at a level now instead of just sitting down and saying i'm going to learn the first unit of a level and i'm going to do it today don't do that, just do kind of like, oh, I'm going to read this bit here, I'm going to read this bit here, I'm going to read this bit here. Um, for maths and chemistry, I've got kind of like some start courses over on my website. For um, maths, there are videos and there are loads of questions online. For chemistry, it's just a little downloadable workbook with link to videos and multiple choice questions. And multiple choice questions are used very, very heavily in A-level sciences, so this is a skill that you need to learn. Doing something with your brain over the summer will also look after your mental health because I don't know about you, in fact, well, I imagine a large chunk of the country is feeling like I am at the moment. I am slowly going crazy. I'm not hiding it very well. Um, being stuck inside the house, not being able to do my usual things, not being able to have my hair done, I had to look look I mean they're just not very good like all the little things that made my life nice don't exist anymore um which is a bit depressing and the fact that we've got no end to it kind of makes it even worse sometimes when you have like you know with your exams there was an end date and there was a future after the end date and things looked happy and bright after that end date with this there is no end date and it's just a little bit sad um so it is really, really important that we are active in looking after our mental health. So I'm talking about things like mindfulness. There are loads and loads of free videos on YouTube that will just sit there and do you a 15 minute, 10 minute, 5 minute of mindfulness meditation. Getting outside the house, um, calling people on the phone, and I don't mean kind of like, you know, video chatting with people i mean actually calling your nan and seeing how she is now she will probably tell you the same story that she's told you a billion times but what she would do after she's hung up the phone is that she'll call your uncle and tell it how nice it was so I'd talk to you on the phone because that's what my nan does um and you know just little things like reaching out to people like does the person on the corner need you to go and get that paper for them every morning you know just finding ways that you can be useful um is good um anyway um once my son goes back to school he's in year one so hopefully that will be after half term um i can start producing lots and lots more a-level content for you so um a level maths lots and lots that should be a level maths should be finished like by october half term um a level chemistry 
a level biology this is my priority at the moment and um, there's loads of stuff up for all of those already um anyway guys I, I do feel like i've been waffling on for quite a long time now where this video is basically meant to tell you that i'm making a long video for you tomorrow um i will send the long video out to um my mailing list as soon as it is ready um so if you are interested um there's, there'll be a link down in the description below so you can join that so you can get early access to the video otherwise it'll be out tomorrow morning um 